Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've ever walked past a construction site or seen a building going up from scratch, you've probably noticed something. A whole lot of steel bars or mesh being laid down before they pour the concrete. So what's that all about? Today, we're diving into the world of concrete reinforcement, what it is, why we use it, and how it makes concrete so much stronger than it would be on its own. Whether you're a curious learner, a student, or someone in construction, this video will give you a solid foundation. Let's get into it, right here, on History of Simple Things. Before we can understand concrete reinforcement, let's back up and talk about concrete itself. Concrete is a mixture of cement, water, and aggregates like sand, gravel, or crushed stone. It's one of the most widely used building materials on the planet, and for good reason. It's durable, fire-resistant, relatively cheap, and it can be molded into pretty much any shape. But here's the catch. Concrete is incredibly strong when it comes to compression. That means it can hold up a ton of weight pressing down on it. But when you start bending it or pulling it apart, what engineers call tension, that's where concrete starts to struggle. It cracks. It breaks. And that's a big problem for structures like bridges, buildings, or parking garages that deal with all kinds of forces from different directions. That's where reinforcement comes in. Concrete reinforcement is all about giving concrete the strength it needs in those weaker areas, especially in tension. The most common way to do this, steel. You've probably seen those long steel bars, called rebar, short for reinforcing bar, being laid out before concrete is poured. These bars are placed strategically in the parts of the structure that are likely to face tension or flexing forces. When the concrete hardens around the rebar, the two materials work together. Concrete handles the compression, steel takes on the tension. It's a perfect tag team. Now you might be wondering, why steel specifically? Well, steel and concrete have a really important thing in common. They expand and contract at nearly the same rate when temperatures change. That means they move together, reducing the risk of cracks or separation. Plus, steel is incredibly strong under tension and has great ductility, meaning it can bend a bit without breaking. Ideal qualities for reinforcement. Steel is also easy to shape, cut, and weld, making it versatile for a wide range of structures. Steel rebar is the most recognizable form of reinforcement but it's not the only one. There are several ways to reinforce concrete, each with specific uses and benefits. Rebar comes in different diameters and is often ribbed to improve grip with the concrete. It's laid in a grid or framework and tied together before the concrete is poured. Then there's welded wire mesh, which looks like a steel net. It's commonly used for flat slabs like driveways, sidewalks, and floor panels. It's quicker to install than rebar in many cases and provides consistent spacing. Fiber reinforcement is another method where small fibers made from steel, glass, or synthetic materials are mixed directly into the concrete. This technique helps control cracking from shrinkage and temperature changes. In more advanced or large-scale projects, engineers use pre-stressing and post-tensioning. These involve tensioned steel cables that preload the concrete, helping it withstand heavy loads even before any external force is applied. So, how is reinforcement actually used on site? Before concrete is poured, workers create a framework using rebar or mesh. This skeleton is tied together with wire and placed inside wooden or metal molds that will define the shape of the final structure. It's super important that the reinforcement isn't sitting directly on the ground or pressed against the mold edges. To make sure the steel is embedded properly, 
Small supports or spacers are used to suspend it within the concrete, keeping it in the right place, usually somewhere near the center of a slab, beam, or column. Once the concrete is poured and hardens, the steel is locked inside. From the outside, you might never see it, but it's working behind the scenes to give the structure its strength. Even though reinforced concrete is incredibly strong, it's not invincible. One of the biggest threats is corrosion. When water or salty air seeps into the concrete and reaches the steel, the rebar can start to rust. And when steel rusts, it expands, causing the surrounding concrete to crack and eventually crumble. To fight this, Engineers use protective coatings on the steel, corrosion-resistant alloys, or special additives in the concrete mix. In environments like coastal areas or industrial sites, they may even use stainless steel or epoxy-coated rebar to add extra protection. Regular inspections and maintenance also help catch issues before they become serious problems. Technology in concrete reinforcement has come a long way, and new materials are being developed to make structures even stronger and more durable. Glass Fiber Reinforced Polymer, GFRP, is one such alternative. It's lightweight, corrosion-resistant, and often used in projects where steel would be too heavy or prone to rust. Basalt rebar is another exciting option. Made from volcanic rock fibers, it's strong and naturally resistant to corrosion. And then there's carbon fiber reinforcement, extremely strong and lightweight, though currently expensive and mostly used in high-end or specialized projects. These innovations are helping engineers build better, longer-lasting structures with fewer environmental and maintenance concerns. So why is all this important? Without reinforcement, concrete just wouldn't be strong or flexible enough to handle modern construction needs. Reinforcement allows us to build structures that are not only strong, but also safe, durable, and long-lasting. It transforms concrete from a brittle material into one that can bend, stretch, and carry tremendous loads. So that's a concrete reinforcement in a nutshell. It's one of those behind the scenes things that literally holds the world together. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.